man, they are off. So chasing tail, flat man, uncle's a pimp. All right, so we're going to get to go ahead, and uh, I am joined today by Stan. Thank you for joining me, Stan. Good afternoon, Patricia. Um Yes, definitely going to be a very exciting raid. Oh, I just got dropped into this one, so uh, could you give me some background on these wonderful performances right after we get the young plant? No, oh, absolutely. The uncle item, of course, the most important thing. The bow! The bow. <laughs> Let's go, lads! The fastest weapon of the escape. Absolutely, and a bomb drop already. Man, what? this is going to be the fastest this escape ever. Gets he confirmed. <laughs> I mean, Justin's now with a commanding lead, obviously. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that bomb definitely will help runners out get into the back part of the escape which does hold an, adi an additional three chests so no unfair advantages will be gained this time during the escape absolutely i mean and they're both neck and neck you know christos uh, is the runner up from the fall tournament so he was one of the auto qualifiers another four bomb drop there for christos so he's good even for kakariko that's going to be absolutely amazing for him uh, Z, uh, absolutely poor crew, I be believe this. Uh, he's just an amazing runner in his own right. Uh, if anyone can give Christos a run for his life, and we got a tight uh, power glove already. Whoa, a bit ahead of, ahead of ourselves. <laughs> oh, yeah, but that is definitely an amazing item to find. Part number one of the, uh, uh, of the Dark World puzzle. Absolutely, and I do. While we're doing this escape, I do want to give a quick shout out to our tracker, J Lo, helping out with tracking, keeping us honest, and making sure that uh, I don't embarrass myself too much. I mean, <laughs> talking about embarrassment. I mean, you know, being commentators for this and all. Uh, I mean, I don't mind a little bit of embarrassment, but you know. There's some things that you gotta, you gotta hang out for. Yeah, I'll be sure that chat won't notice anything out of the ordinary. So, let's get going. <laughs> yeah, chat, I just want to um, say, yeah, I will always, I will always appear high because uh, I am what one might call a hype commentator. Uh, I I bring the hype and I yell and I scream. Yes, very true. Uh, no, I'm guys. I'm not. I'm not that hype. Let's let's keep it realistic here. Well, you are semi hype. We'll go with that. I uh, I grunt and then I sing and I try to have inflection in my voice. Uh, one might say <laughs> I am the Dick Vital of randomizer. At which point, I hate myself. But so far, other than that, you know what? We have a bow. We have a power glove. We are doing reasonably well so far going through there. You know, there's there's a whole lot you can ask for uh, in here. I don't know if you can ask for too much more, but, man, I'm sure these guys are hoping. We're still waiting for the map. We already have the key. So at least four of these last five treasure chests will have something. We'll see what exactly we have. Ooh, only a piece of heart so far. Well, yeah, as I mentioned, uh, we will be coming up surely on the three chests of the escape now, thankfully. Uh, Justin having one, and Christos up to five, even. Oh, 
before that, we find the moon, moon pearl. pearl. What? Oh, let's go. Well, that yeah. is already part two to the Dark World Puzzle. Only either another glove upgrade or the hammer remains. And with that, we have also found ourselves a new commentator. That, so that is unfortunately going to do it for me for tonight. Um, I will be sure to watch the rest of this race. And uh, be sure to make it hype for me, lads. Have a great night. Yeah, Stan, go ahead and uh, and stick around because we're gonna. This is gonna be some hype. I can already predict. We have Justin Z coming through the escape with a slight, ever so slight advantage over Christos Owen. We'll see how this goes. And joining me now is Cobb La La La. How are we doing, Cobb? I'm doing great, Vitasia. Uh, really uh, glad to be able to join in at uh, the last minute. Uh, been an exciting race so far, huh? Bo, oh, gloves, yeah. Moon Pearl, geez. I know, I'm a little bit overexcited for this hype. Um, you know, I'm, you're not used to getting such a front-loaded seed. This could open ourselves up real early and bomb pull for the tier two from the tree. Uh, this is just, I mean, setting up really nicely for both these runners. Oh, absolutely. They're going to have enough bombs for uh, the early game. I, I would be surprised unless they have trouble getting weapons if uh, they have to worry about bombs the rest of this uh, match. Yeah, I really don't doubt that they'll have any issues whatsoever. We see, and we see another tier of the tree pole. Uh, that's the tier one tree pole. That's no damage taken and one enemy killed, and it's full magic refill. So that's uh, something good to know as you're getting ready to go through. Uh, if you ever need a magic refill, uh, trees are going to be your answer. Oh, absolutely. So what do you think the troll item is going to be? Because there's going to be a troll item. Uh, there is most usually a troll item, but, uh, you know, with everything that we have up to this point in time, hmm, let's see. Okay, we have, okay, we just got the powder. I am predicting something obscure, but can absolutely happen. I'm predicting hammer is going to be our troll item, and it's going to be in the bat location, and the only way to get there is through Titan's Mist and a mirror over from the light world. That is super specific. I, you know what? Go big or go home with the predictions, I say. I'd like to see sword as go mode. Like uh, the master sword as go mode. You know, the with these two runners, I don't know if you're necessarily... They're go, not going to have a difficult time. Uh, but I would like to see some high-end like high, like high end running of Master Sword Silverless. I think that would be fun to see. So I'm with you on that one. Yeah, definitely. You know, there's definitely a difference between being able to complete Master Sword Ganon, which is pretty difficult and being able to do it efficiently. That, that's like next level right there. But man, we have quite a healthy seed up to this point in time. Not only do we have blue mail already, but we also have seven hearts, which is really pretty respectable when you're still working your way through Kakariko Village. But, other than that, Kakariko itself has been a bit of a bust. We, you know, we got all of our value. We got the bow, the moon pearl, and the power glove from the escape sequence. The only real progression item, quote unquote, that we've gotten is the powder, which isn't going to help us out in the immediate future. So uh, Kakariko, Lakariko is more like it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we had a big 20 in the library, and there's our first sword. Uh, in the maze racing, Christos, out of uh, habit, hit the select button, but uh, processed in time that it's a sword and he's going to go grab it. 
Yeah, both runners are going ahead of doing it, and they are within a screen transition of one another. This is just... I mean, when you're in the top 32, first of all, one, you have to give mad respect to both of these runners for getting this far in this particular bracket stage. Two, uh, I expect nothing but challenging, daunting games between these two runners. Uh, you know, both Justin and Christos Owen are anyone in this world. Uh, tournament right now at this level should be considered top tier. This is anyone's race. I know Christos has probably been around the block a little bit longer. There's our first map check. Uh, but do not discount Justin just because Christos probably is a little bit more of a recognized name. Justin is completely capable, as you've already seen, of doing some amazing things in his own right. Absolutely. You know, and I don't know if Justin went to... Uh... A, or GDQ or not, but um, Christos was. So uh, he was not near his console. He probably hasn't been playing much for the past week. You know, uh, those tiny seconds that you've been talking about, they can uh, add up when you're just a little bit not practiced. Absolutely. And we even saw that with uh, Christos's. Uh, opening screen uh, message. He says, rip GDQ flu. Uh, he may be feeling a little bit under the weather. When you're around that many people and you're not used to being around a whole lot of people, you just kind of, your immune system does not know what to do. So he may be feeling slightly under the weather, which is definitely an advantage to Justin Z. Yeah, but you're definitely right. You know, uh, these tournaments have always had very skilled players, but I think each tournament that goes by, that skill gap, especially towards, you know, the end of the tournament, gets so much closer. Oh, and we have the red cane. Cane of Samaria, the second best cane in the game, IMO, and we see our first... Uh, semi-route divergence here. Justin Z is going to save and quit. He is opting to avoid the Ice Rod Cave for now. We also did get the Bombos Medallion in there, so Bombos might be our ticket into Ice Palace, depending if we do or don't find the Fire Rod relatively quick. Um, it is also our first medallion, and since we have a sword, we can use it if we so desire. So, nice to see here. Uh, both Bombos and Red Cane later options. Maybe you don't necessarily want to see either of those two immediately, but nice to have out of the way. Absolutely. You know, those are items that um, don't lock many uh, locations. So they can literally be found almost anywhere. So finding them early prevents you from having to really search for them. All right, so Justin Z is going to go ahead and looks like he's on his way over to Eastern. It's going to be a sequence break past the dark rooms unless he ends up finding the lamp at some point in time. Uh, but with the bow, an early Crystal Eastern Palace is almost a no-brainer. Uh, the only thing Justin has on... Uh, Christos has gone ahead and done the Ice Rod Cave. It was just a piece of heart, so nothing terribly important. And Justin might be saving that until it's a more efficient check later with the flute or boots or, or anything of that nature. If he gets enough items quickly enough and enough locations are marked off, he may just opt to entirely skip that location as well. Yep. You know, and you bring up the uh, Bombos uh, being maybe helpful early on. And this is a perfect example because while there are some strategies for uh, the difficult dark room here in Eastern Palace. Not, not the one that's in the square, but the one headed towards the boss. Um, with the Bombos, you can move forward, activate those Igors, and I'm pretty sure a Bombos will kill an Igor, but I'm not 100 on that. You know, I don't know if I've ever actually seen anyone kill the Igors in that particular room with with bombos and i if you want me to be completely honest i think the fact that you would even have to cast it is 
uh, a bit of a time loss compared to just slashing with your sword and then shooting the Igor with the bow. I mean, comparatively speaking, both these runners, you know, if it were me, totally, I would completely try it because I'm horrible at dark roots. But these two runners, I think, are completely capable of doing the dark rooms. And we don't find anything in Eastern Palace up to this point in time. Everything beyond this point is going to be a sequence break for Justin Z. Uh, oh, we do have the big key. So uh, I was wrong. We have the big treasure chest, which is a compass. So Eastern Palace is technically worthless, but it is a crystal. Well, if the big chest was a compass, do we know that we, we don't have all three items then? No, we've got the compass in the map, so we absolutely, and we've gotten the big key, so two items are going to be uh, locked behind dark rooms. So, oh, you're saying in terms of the logic, I gotcha. Yeah, in terms of the logic. So if anything is in these two item locations, we will know logically that they, that, uh, they will not lock, like, the lamp cannot be behind them. Uh, just a pipe bomb upgrade at this point in time. But say, for example, we get the Titan's Mitts off of uh, the Armos Knights at this point in time. We will know that logically the Titan's Mitts would not be, the lamp would not be locked anywhere that the Titan's Mitts has just because of logic requirements and uh, the coding that the admins and uh, the developers have done so well in this particular game. A uh, big shout out to Vtorp and uh, Christos Hoven is, is one of the people that helps develop this game actually. So big shout out to them. Knowing the logic and how things work can definitely play to the advantage here. Oh, absolutely. And, and what you just explained is exactly why some runners do prefer to sequence break because it gives them information about where other items are. Absolutely. Early lamp can be kind of an, an interesting, uh, like it opens up so much and it's the easiest sequence break to do is navigating dark rooms. While the logic necessarily indicates you don't necessarily have to navigate the dark rooms, the runners of this caliber, not only are they able to do it, but it gives them extra information to do it. Justin Z looks like we're set up the quick kill very nicely here on the Armos Knights. Ooh, and it's our third bottle of the game. You know, uh, we had three bottles given to us and not a sick kid check is is the seed trying to tell us something cub it might be uh then again it might be trying to tell us that uh i'm gonna troll you on the sick kid i mean it could uh justin is Justin is making a low percent play over here. Looks like he's going to Agena's cave right now, or he, yeah, he is. Okay. Now, to be fair, logically, there aren't a lot more options. Uh, they don't have Death Mountain in Logic. They could go there, you know, using Dark Rooms, but it's not in Logic. Um. And other than that, I mean, you have Sick Kid and not much else. Zora, but you don't have the money for it. Yeah, I mean, you got Zora, Sick Kid. Uh, he's making the gamble that it's not an Ice Rod game. So we, I like that he's sticking to the gamble and not routing that in. What do we have here? It's a Titansman! Oh! <laughs> Oh, that is an amazing play. Justin Z saves and quits, and then he's in Link's house and says, wait a minute, I don't want to be here. I'm going to go to Sanctuary. Yep, not much he can do with the Titan's Mitts there. Um, you know, the Titan's Mitts basically at this point are going to give him uh, 
Dark World access on uh, in Kakarika Village wouldn't do much for him in the southern part of the map. Absolutely. So we are seeing where exactly Justin's going to do go. Ladies and gentlemen, Christos will be joining us uh, back shortly. Absolutely, I am sure. In the meantime, uh, we have Justin Z that is going to uh, be going in, checking Sick Kid before he routes over to get our first dip into Dark World at 20 minutes in, and it's just a piece of heart. Yeah, so with, uh, oh, are we going to, I think I just saw a flash from Christos' screen. I think the way that this is going to work is we're not going to see Christos again for 15 minutes, even though he's playing, uh, his stream will have to rebuffer unless OBS, unless like OBS didn't quit and it was just... It's still buffered. I, I, I'm not sure what, what it's going to be like. But just because we're not seeing him doesn't mean he's not still playing. Well, I do believe that he is still playing. I mean, he, he is still going. He's going to be working on his net a little bit. Um, believe in Christos Owen, ladies and gentlemen. In the meantime, focusing on Justin at this point in time, he sees the Quake medallion. Yeah, and there's Christos. He is, looks like he's in the sanctuary location. We will see if we get a menu pause. Looks like he's on his way over to Kakariko Village. Either he's turning in the bottle or he did navigate down to check on... Oh, he is going up to Death Mountain, actually. Ooh. Um, so yeah, it looks like his OBS probably didn't quit. He still had it buffered. Um, but, uh... hmm. Yeah, I mean, rando's gonna rando, guys. It's No one's ever necessarily out of it, per se. So just uh, take it for what it is. So we'll, we'll see what happens here before too long. So Chad is saying that he did go to Agena. Um, so he should have the uh, Titan's Mitts. Um, maybe he is just making a gamble here but also at the same time he's getting himself a save point that he's gonna have to get at some point yeah i mean uh, a lot of runners you know different runners feel differently about the early death mountain play the save and quit location up here on death mountain is absolutely nice especially when you have the flute uh i personally opt it and tell flute if i there's no flute in that save and quit point until there is a flute. But Christos, we shall see what play he's making at this point in time. And it's just some rupee. So the play that he's made up to this point in time, not the gamble he's looking for. No, but, you know, short of, uh, I, I guess if, Justin grabs the flute as his way onto Death Mountain. You know, Chris has lost a little bit of time there, but otherwise, Justin's gonna have to do the exact same thing. Oh, and Christos is making an interesting play. He's uh, he's hoping the good bee. There, he's gonna give him a hundred rupees for the good bee. And the last bee is not an actual thing, so he's just gonna release it. Meanwhile, Justin Z has not found too much here in. Thieves Town. Now, Thieves Town is a the green pendant, as it seems to always be for whatever reason. 
but it does make these town go from four to five item locations total with that green pendant. So we'll see. It's not necessarily required. Justin is at least gambling. He may have only intended to do the first four, but the first four were garbage. And we do see the the key so far, and it's not locked in the big treasure chest, which does mean one of the treasures is going to be locked behind hammer access here. Uh, Chad is asking, is that B thing that Christos did randomizer only? No, you can do that in the vanilla game. If you buy, if you catch the good B in the Ice Rod Cave, it is absolutely turn him into that guy for 100 rupees in the vanilla game. Now, so there was the compass on blind. Uh, I had been watching Christos's side. Did Justin find the map? Or are we sure that's an item now? I, I absolutely saw him get the map earlier. Okay, so yep. Yeah, he, he was hoping that, that, that uh, blind would be an item, but he now knows that he left something behind. Oh my, and we see the shovel in... Uh, uh, Christos, 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 Christos. Numpy, yeah. you you have the red cane. You have the red. Yeah, cane. he has the red cane. That's yeah. That's that's nice. Numpy, please. Did you just say Numpty, please? I did. I am totally stealing that. <laughs> and we have just a vanilla piece of heart from Justin Z in the digging game. Christos looks like he is on his way, going to be doing the kind of standard routing here. He's gone through, did the, as much as Skullwoods as he can, kind of similar routing to the ball tournament because Skullwoods always seems to have some sort of progression. Justin Z is preparing for a Jeremiah World Tour though. Yeah, which I think he'll, oh, he's going to go get uh, Hype Cave. Yep, because yep. they didn't have access there. Um, yeah, then he'll probably save and quit and, like, check Bottle and Blacksmith at the same time. Well, he's already checked Bottle, so... And, oh, did he fine. check that before he we went to the Dark World? I didn't realize yeah. that. Yeah, he did. But he'll, he will be able to check, uh, the South Grove area as well. So that's, that's fine. And we have our Hype Cave, and so far it's just 5 arrow upgrade. Flippers! That's nice! And a Master Sword! Hey, that's that's a decent hunt game! He's not bad at all. Apparently uh, somebody didn't tell them this seed was V29. I mean, the fact that the the flippers actually give us access to the eastern part of Death Mountain so he can or eastern part of Dark World, so he can go ahead and route in a check to the pyramid and the catfish to complete the world tour, I'm going to go ahead and give that a 7 out of 10 hype game. Oh yeah, this is very good uh, awareness by uh, Justin that uh, he can come over here. Chris now, looks I'm like... Not... Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, I was just going to ask, I'm not sure if he can shed the frog in some way to get Kiki. I guess I've never been in this situation. No, absolutely not. You cannot shed the frog until you turn him in 
which it does restrict your movement if you go into a cave that has multiple exits to it. Uh, Christos looks like he's taking a death warp, so he is not going to complete uh, the entirety of Thieves Town. He's going to say no to that green pendant. They tried to make me go to Thieves Town, and I said no, no, no. Very nice, very nice. I, I appreciate you for that. So nothing terribly exciting was on the pyramid, and we see Justin completing the world tour over here to Catfish. Yep, probably really hoping for that mirror, because that would be a really convenient way to check a couple more items. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Mirror would be the hypest of hype right now, because then you can go ahead and do... Uh, you can do the pyramid or the waterfall fairy. You can go ahead and check the waterfall item location. And if you happen to get enough rupees, then go ahead and check Zora. Not what he was wanting, though. Nope, absolutely not. So Justin is actually going to take the lower route over at the Kakariko Village, in part because he did get that shovel, so he's going to check to see what is in the shovel spot. And I feel contractually obligated to sing as well. Um, <clears throat> do you want to do a fetch quest? Okay, I'm done. I think, isn't there more to that? Well, yeah, but we're not even close to doing a T-Rock guide yet. And oh my god! <laughs> Vanilla flute! Oh, oh wow. my god! Vanilla flute from the shovel. Uh, and with Misery Meyer being the five six, one of the five six crystals, absolutely required. So Christos absolutely does want to do a fetch quest. And did Christos not pick up the shovel? <gasps> no, the shovel was in Thieves Town. Was it in it was in, was the, it in Thieves Town or was it was it in Kakariko? Was it in Village of Outcasts? It might have been in Outcasts, yeah. Yeah, it might have been in the bombable hut in Outcast. Now that I think of it, I'm not. Okay. I'm not 100 on that. Okay, and our and our tracker shows yes, he did pick it up. Um, oh, that would have been bad. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, that that could have gone south very very quickly. Oh Justin yeah. Justin Z going ahead, turning it in. Swag Duck Anthem. Because without a doubt. Christos would have made the long trek back to, um, uh, like back to Pod before he went into Thieves Town again. And ladies and gentlemen, whatever meme you choose, the, the duck is a muck, the pheasant is present. The goose is loose. The dodo is a go-go. Whatever your choice of bird slash adjective that you choose, uh, our method of teleportation around has been unlocked. I like the dodo is a go-go. It's nice. I know, right? I like I I I know I stole it from someone. Like every single one of those I've stolen from someone. I, I mean, extinct bird reference, I like. So Christos looks like he's following the flipper's breadcrumb while Justin was following the flute breadcrumb. Um, interesting. So there's some route divergence here. We're going to see where Justin ends up going at this point in time. Where he, uh, he looks like he's going to be following Christos very, very shortly. Yeah, but Christos didn't do that shovel check when he, uh, 
was uh, routing the um the routing frog. You're right, he hasn't, but at this point in time, there's not a whole lot that, I mean, Justin has checked the flute location that he can. Now, logically, yes, we can get up to Death Mountain, but Christos has already checked that. So at this point in time, the having the flute is not that big of an to Justin. Now, if we figure and if thing in, say, maybe that would be significant. Uh, but I, it really hasn't been that big of an advantage. Justin is using it right now to go check Ice Rod Cave, which Christos did do earlier. But again, like I said, I, you know, there is not a whole lot that the flute is giving an advantage to over Christos at this point in time. So it's a nice pickup, but not something that Justin Z can really take advantage of it yet. So we are seeing some, it looks like Justin is going to continue to kind of route around here. Christos, looks like he's going back to the dark world here. He's kind of taking the little slow way. I wish we had the boots. And we see Justin utilizing the bottle uh, techniques. Did you toss this in? Hey, what's our freebie potion? It is red goo. Nice. Money saved. Christos just finding looks to be a piece of heart up on the bumper ledge. Chad pointing out something interesting. As of right now, both of these runners technically have access to go ahead and at least dip their pinky toe into Ice Palace, which would be horrible. Yeah, I mean... They definitely have the ability to, but they're blocked off from uh, definitely two chests, definitely the boss by the hammer, and depending on how the keys are, uh, possibly even more than that because of the hook shot. Which would you rather do? Would you rather do Ice Palace with this particular item loadout, noting that you might logically be locked somewhere, or would you rather do Pendant Pod? Um, I would, I would rather do Pendant Pod, um, because, you know, you have five, with, with the bow, you have five, or actually, I guess four guaranteed items. Um, maybe five, if Helmosaur doesn't have one. Um, and it's not like you're going to be able to complete Ice Palace anyways. Um, yeah, I, I, I think I'd rather do a uh, pod. And it does look like Christos agrees with you. He is on his way over to the Palace of Darkness. We knew he was going to be there as soon as he didn't save and quit from that catfish area. Uh, with no real easy access to Dark World, uh, he's going to go ahead and... Whoa! Uh, he juked me, going over to the Pyramid. Justin Z is going up Death Mountain. He's going to be disappointed in what he finds. He's probably trying to mentally decide between that Ice Palace or Pod play himself. Yeah, Chris, Christos is still going to hit Pod anyways because of how long it takes to get back here. And... Uh, like you were saying, logically, there are very few other options. Ice Palace is a pretty bad option for him, not to mention without the flute. 
Well, I guess you can swim there, but it's still a little bit of a trek. Um, yeah, he doesn't have a lot of great options um, other than this. You know, if he were to save and qu he's saying in his head, you know, if I save and quit here, check the shovel. It's not the shovel, which we know it is. Um, then he has a three, four minute voyage back to the pod. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with Christos's play at this point in time. And it'd be really hard for anyone to disagree with the play. So it's just kind of the logic that they're guessing in their mind. Justin Z also looks like he's going over to check here in Skull Woods. Nothing is going to be here. We've already seen Christos check that. So Christos is giving us our first look at something new right now. Yep. You know, and truth be told, uh, even though Christos can get the flute, you had put mention to it, it's not doing him any good. We've seen the items that the flute gives you, and nothing so far. So um, it's either this or it's ice from, you know, what we know. Yeah, it is worth noting, again, if this is your first ever randomizer match that you're watching, which... First of all, what have you been doing with your life if this is your first one watching? But uh, both Christos and Justin, you know, they don't get to watch each other on what they're doing. So they're in kind of isolation chambers, just watching themselves play. There's a, a delay on the on the stream so that, that you can't even necessarily see what each other is doing. Uh, so they do not see what each other is seeing. They are just trying to go as fast as they can with the knowledge that each of them have. And so far, we're not seeing a whole lot in pod, but we're just starting to get to the meaty bits of it. Yeah, I mean, you might find an item, maybe two if you're lucky in the front of pod. But at the end of the day, there, you know, there are at least four keys, uh, four small keys in the front half of pod. And I believe, what, like seven chests? Uh, there's six chests in the front half of pod and six. and four of them are guaranteed to be small keys and we've already found the two uh we found the big key and we found a red crystal a red uh ruby so we guarantee that these next two treasure chests that crystal someone is going to find are going to be small keys Unfortunately, Christos doesn't have boots to go through that room. It's definitely a lot of fun to just uh, get that right location that you get to dash past all those spikes. Oh, absolutely. And it's it's glorious. And Christos is going to be setting up another Death Warp. He didn't quite take enough damage as he's getting through. This is one of the disadvantages uh, when you need to Death Warp and you've got an early blue, blue mail and already have 10 hearts. Uh, makes death warping a little bit difficult. Most definitely, and um, I would not be surprised at all if we see a bomb jump, or I'm sorry, a hammer jump from uh, Christos here. Oh, speaking of, I love this new bomb jump tech that he's doing right here. This is amazing. I love it. Yeah, Christo, Christos has made this popular as of late. Uh, he really likes it. Yeah, we're going to see the uh, hammer jump here because uh, he knows how to do this dark room backwards and uh, it will prevent him from having to death warp out of that room. Uh, question in chat, does that actually save time compared to the other way? Yes, absolutely. Um, I don't know the exact time constraints, but if, if you think about it, uh, being able to save on the lag time from the, the crystal is enough in and it's of its own. Um, Justin Z looks like he's setting up a hula hand room. Uh, he needs rupees. He does not have enough to pay off the extortionist Kiki the monkey.
Yep, and that's going to be really his last expenditure of the seed. So he, he got what he needed, and because uh, I believe we've done chest dig, Zora. Um, it's really going to be your major expenses throughout the seed. All right, so Justin's he getting ready to go back into the dark world. He's he's kind of spent a lot of time here. We see a compass on Christos' side. Man, it's. It's like it's dark in that room. I have a hard time seeing what he's picking up. And a small key. So him finding that small key means that uh, the southern rat room is going to have an item. But I believe it is still locked behind the lamp and it's another fetch quest. Um... No, that should not, because he got enough keys in the front half that he could have um, opened the doors necessary without going into any dark rooms. I believe. I mean, either way, we are looking Christos turning in fetch quest. He's going to get this flute and say, man, I've been running all over the place for nothing. Not nothing, per se, Christos, but... It does not appear as though we got much out of that Palace of Darkness dip, other than the mushroom. Right, and all we really have left uh, is that mushroom. Um, assuming it's in logic, which you're right, I'm not sure if it is. Um, we have some of Ice Palace and also um, the lunchbox. Ooh, Gary's lunchbox has kind of an intriguing option at that point in time because it is technically in logic, but man, is it so far out of the way right now. Well, but with the flute, it's not too bad. Um, we may see Christos, uh, well, he might go do the mushroom first, um, but I, I would see him doing the lunchbox before going into Ice Palace without a hammer or a hook shot. Oh, absolutely. You, you absolutely want to do it. And we are going to get a mushroom check. So let's see what we show here. Anticipation is killing. Wah, wah. not exactly what he's looking for so are we gonna see eight or are we gonna see three? Oh, he hasn't done he hasn't done this that's right we've seen uh we've seen the meyer area but he has not At the same time, Thieves Town could be weighing on his mind. Um, if he continues to follow the idea that it's not Thieves Town, and assuming it's not the Green Bending, because I don't think we've seen that yet, um, then he'll go to Ice Palace or Lunchbox. Oh, okay, we did see Green Pendant. Um, yeah, so... Christos, if he follows his um, plan of avoiding uh, Thieves Town, has gained some time by doing that. Justin uh, setting up for the death warp that he knows is going to be coming. Yeah, he didn't want to quite struggle quite like Christos did there.
So where do we go from here, Christos? I, I think he's saying lunchbox. Or he could be doing Thieves Town, yeah. Be I interesting. Mean, Thieves Town it does have four item locations. So in terms of pure density, yes, but it does look like he's doing lunchbox at this point in time. He is committed to the gamble that nothing is going to be in that pendant dungeon. You know, and I, I I definitely respect that because, you know, the issue is he could be saying to himself, I decided to make this gamble. If my opponent didn't, then I'm in trouble. But if, uh, you know, but if they did go through Thieves Town and there was nothing, me following behind him is just going to give him a chance to catch up. Yeah, and I think at this point in time, you know, one of the big things to remember in Randomizer is there are so many decisions to make red crystals, so it is absolutely Ice Palace. Um, I, I gotta imagine that unless the first item is a key, you know, I'm, I'm not 100% on my Ice Palace key logic, but unless it's a key, it's gotta be the item. Yeah, I'm I'm right there with you. And I mean that's this is why we got early bombos. So, you know, that's my thinking at this point in time. Yes, we have an early bombos. We had an early sword or two. Yeah, Ice Palace, at least to me, is probably gonna hold something at, from what we've been told early on, but Brando's done weirder things. So what item are we going to find? Is it going to be, I mean, something super horrible like Mirror? Or, I mean, it could be the Hammer, which would be nice. Yeah, if it, I mean, if it's the Hammer, it allows them to uh, finish the dungeon, possibly out of logic, but finish it nonetheless. It's a compass. Like I said, my ice palace logic, who knows? Oh, God. And chat pointing out, I did call Trollhammer early, early, early on. Although I was, frankly, very specific in how I said this trolled it. I'm hoping for a mirror before the hammer because that my uh, prediction would still be in play. Justin Z also getting disappointed and decides to pick up some blue goo in the process. Uh, he is trolled as well. Christos, you'll notice, is not going to be setting up the bomb jump. He is not expecting to stay here very long. He knows you cannot beat the dungeon without the hammer. So he is saying, I know I'm going to have to come back through here at some point, And I'm going to gamble that I do not need to go ahead and full clear this. So he is not setting up that Ice Palace bomb jump. He is not intended to go into Cold Stair. This is purely a method of getting a new item for him. Well, yeah, definitely. Um, the He would still be able to complete it, and he has the cane, which makes things a little easier in that sense. Um, if he gets a hammer, he'd be able to complete it. Uh, yeah. But he does, by not doing the ha hammer jump, yes, he has access to one more uh, chest if I'm thinking this through correctly, and that's going to be in the ice tea room. Uh, I'm not sure if he can get to uh, that very first uh, right side room with the spikes. Uh, it'll depend on the keys. Yeah, all the treasure chests over there. There is there is one treasure chest I think that is available. Yeah, with the key logic that he has, he yeah, with the and second you can tell, key, yeah. 
like Christos, before he dropped down, he was thinking about the logic that could possibly be here. It's like, where, what is going on here? Okay, so he he's just, he's aware that this isn't in the logic, but he's going to use this bomb jump because it's a quicker way of getting there. I mean, yeah, it is in logic, and that's why he's going to the spot because he wants to be able to, to get there more efficiently. I mean, you could run, you know, death warp and go all the way back and come back around, and logically, that very well might be required. Justin C, meanwhile, uh, is on muscle memory. Yep, this has to be the boots. Boots. So, yes, that gives us access to King's Tomb and Bonk Rocks, but you know what else it gives us access to? Misery Mire. Why do you say such hurtful things, Cobb? Like, that, that hurts my soul when you say things like Misery Mire is in logic for our second crystal. Even the first crystal that we've gotten isn't in logic. Uh, I'm evil like that, because I'm not the one running it. And at the same, and truth be told, at the same time, these runners, uh, while they don't have the lamp, they're going to be able to complete Mire, because they can do those dark ones. All right, Bonk Rocks is the Fire Rod. Okay, some actual progression, kind of. I wanted to see Misery Mire. I mean, it still could be Misery Mire. Fine, because... fine, go to Skull Woods, whatever. I mean, keep in mind, Misery Mire, we didn't have a fire source, so things like a lot of those treasure chests were locked behind having a fire source at that point in time. So, yeah, we could probably complete Misery Mire, but we couldn't even access, you know, two of the treasure chests. like Justin is going he's going to be making the play as well uh, to pick up the fire rod he's going to be happy now I don't know how many items they've already picked up here in Skull Woods but there's got to be at least one item here otherwise there's nothing there's no point in being here Oh, that's interesting. So, Christos picked up that blue goo when he was uh, checking the mushroom. Justin, I don't think did. I think he just has a red potion. I think Justin picked up a blue potion. Oh, did he? Know. Yeah. Okay. Well, because he also has the knowledge that a tree pole is green. A, you know, a tier one tree pole is a full re refill. And Christos Owen has just about the friendliest Mothula I've ever seen. And he gives us another bottle for our fourth bottle. Well, Mothula was hiding that bottle so that, you know, to prevent uh, bee strats. So, um... That looks to be the second item. I think your call about Meyer is still correct. I'm a big fan of this. They are not. Well, yes. I mean, I think this is one of those things where we can agree. Uh, we are big fans of this. Chat is probably big fans of this. 
Christos Owen and Justin Z are cursing Vitor under their breath, saying, What are you doing to me, C? I don't know. At the end of the day, Christos has his, himself to blame for this one. He, he, he developed it too. See Christos using uh, King Strats there in Misery Mire. All right, so Christos is in Misery Mire. Justin Z is in uh, Skull Woods. See, and here's the problem that I think is, is happening. We are at an hour in. We are only at two crystals. Uh, we are logically locked behind a lot of things. What I worry about here, and I think Justin C has the same worry, is that right now, if it's an open sea, where, you know, you're given entire access to the dark world early and, and given kind of free flow of everything, it would absolutely help Justin Z, because no offense to Justin Z, Christos Owen is one of the most solid execution-based runners that are in the randomizer community. And the problem with execution-based seeds is when it's linear like this, like, you know, you go to one dungeon, get one item, you go to another dungeon, you get another item, and it just, the breadcrumbs only go in one direction and doesn't allow for any routing decisions. That does nothing but benefits the superior execution runner. And it's not an insult to Justin Z to say Christos is the superior execution runner among these two. Oh, absolutely not. You know, um, at the end of the day, execution is shown to be very important, but we've seen plenty of great executioners uh, beaten by uh, either better following of the logic or just um, luckier choices. Absolutely. So Christo is still looking for those items, and sure enough, they are going to be in the back of Misery Mire, locked coincidentally by that fire rod. Uh, both uh, the only two treasure chests that Christos Owen has not opened are locked by fire access right now. So uh, we've not seen any items up to this point in time. There is the map. So vanilla big key chest has has got to have some progression. And again, yeah, I, yep. This seed is what one might say is horrible. Yeah, because I'm sure that Christos is going to complete this dungeon at this time. But whatever is on Vitreus is not in logic until they find the lamp, which I would not be surprised at all. This is the lamp. Oh yeah, this is the lamp. I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> but Mirror! It's the you know, this is this is actually a convenient spot for you because you can go ahead and get the checkerboard cave, which will be nice. I'm, you know what? I'm still banking. The the dream is still alive, man. Did I? I'm gonna be like Mike. Call my shot from, like, the stands. Uh, if the hammer's at Magic Bat, uh, I would like you to choose six numbers for me, please. And I will use them later today. Sir, I will humbly decline and say I will be choosing six numbers for myself instead. Because if that happens, that just means I can switch to doing commentary full time. All right, so Christos is going through these dark rooms. 
Uh, it looks like he's not having any problems navigating them, as one would expect someone of Christos's caliber to do. Uh, keep in mind, this is not going to be, you know, your grandfather's vitreous fight. He's got Master Sword, Blue Mail. He's only got five parts. Uh, he's, I mean, he's got a ton of arrows, so I imagine we're going to see arrow stress, but no invincibility items. Like, this is not going to be fun. Oh, wait, okay, he powdered. Still, I mean, these... These eyes hit hard, um, and he, he's going to start off with the NMG strats, and then probably switch to arrows, or just say I don't even care about uh, the fact that I have a Master Sword, and destroy those eyes. Man, he knew exactly at the point which pixel the damage started kicking in, and he's Ice Rod, I mean, it's nice! You wanted to see that, but uh, still doesn't give him any sort of an advantage right now. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, Justin's going to end up getting the same thing. But, you know, if you look at it, um, I, I got to imagine that Death Mountain's going to be in his very, very near future. Um, and Justin, or Christos... Mirror, I mean, went away and says, oh, wait, I forgot. This means I can do checkerboard. This means I can do desert palace, at least make the check in there. Uh, we've not seen anything required from any of the pendant dungeons up to this point in time. Even the green pendant was a dud. We may see Christos opt to at least check desert palace. It'll be a relatively quick check with all those straightaways in the boots. And Christos, what do we have in checkerboard cave? It is just the green. So you know what uh, is in the logic now. Now he's Death Mountain and Turtle Rock. No, he still need either. He still need the hammer, basically. But uh, Pyramid Fairy is now in logic. Uh, no, it's not. Oh, you're right because the Mire Crystal was not in logic. Yep. Well, Mire but Crystal was in logic, but we also don't have access to get to the Pyramid Fairy from the Light World. We don't have Hammer yet! And the only other way to get that is if we have the uh, Aghanim play, because you can't jump into the water with that bomb. Soggy bombs don't work. Oh, that's a good point. I didn't think about that. Now, I wonder if you could use the glitch. You know, the uh, screen transition glitch. But yeah, you're right, it is not in Logic. All right, so Christos is going to be checking Desert Palace. He has his mirror equipped. Uh, I can't imagine he's going to stick around for the Lanmo fight. We shall see what we have here. 300 rupees. There's one item. He's still looking for that second item. It is on Lanmo. And he is fluting away. He is gambling that Land Molus does not have our progression. He's saying, Tower of Hera seems nice. Now we still have a item, or well, actually a couple items. But unless I'm looking at this wrong and forgetting about something, uh, Hookshot could be on pedestal. Yep, absolutely. Uh, the only thing that, that we do not have that cannot be on the pedestal right now is the hammer because of logical access for Palace of Darkness. Everything else that we don't have could logically be on the pedestal. And... Oh, and lamp. Yes. I don't 
don't know if pedestal lamp is even a possibility. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think it's a remote one. I think you can have, like, a desert Hera swamp type thing. But it takes a lot of things for that to fall into play. Yeah, it does. All right, and there's... Is that the first or second item in Tower of Hera? I think that's the first. So we have Landmo, which is our other 5-6 crystal, so it's definitely a value given that Meyer was the, the first one that we defeated, even though it was done out of logic. And there's the hammer! <laughs> Justin Z is right on Christos' tail. Stop! Hammer time! Do 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 Can't us this? Sure, we'll go with that. And Christos making immediate use of that hammer. Uh, going right over here and says, Yes, East Death Mountain, your treasure trove of items come to me. Now... You were correct in the sense that um, it did require the lamp or uh, the mirror to get the hammer. I mean, I mean, hammer certainly trolled us, and you know now we do also have logical access to the to the pyramid fairy. So, I'm, okay, we don't because of lamp misery mire blah, but. We are a lamp and a hook shot. Oh, we have Jumbo. Can you believe that? You're absolutely right. Um, but at the same time, these runners aren't even considering lamp for logic at this point. Maybe in terms of where they could or could not find the hook shot, but they ain't looking for the lamp after they find the hook shot. Oh, absolutely not. And it's interesting, Christos is diving Turtle Rock before he even checks the rest of East Death Mountain. He goes, let's just do this. Yeah, I mean, either he finds the hook shot and it won't be, uh, you know, in this dungeon. Yeah, he either finds the hook shot in this dungeon or he completes it anyways. What we're seeing right now is the only point that he's going to lose any time not having the hook shot. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not bad, all things. He's, he's, it's a logical play. He's making it based on efficiency and saying, you know, a lot of runners try to go out of their way to save time doing a, a unnecessarily climb up Death Mountain. Christo says, nah this has got to be required so he's going to make the gamble up here and i think it's a smart gamble all things said yeah i mean so he lost 10 seconds doing um doing that torch uh room the long way if he had opened turtle rock and gone and opened any other chest the, even if the hook shot was in the very first chest he opened it's gonna take him more than 10 seconds yeah, and of course I see a lot of the other top tier runners in chat saying this is a gamble. It's completely logical. I'm gonna go ahead and do this every day. And and I don't disagree. Yeah, it I, I feels I it feels like a gamble fun. because it's still relatively early for Turtle Rock and people try to hold Turtle Rock until the very end, but it's a logical play and I like it. Yeah, I mean, what? You can jump in back into Ice Palace that has one item left. Um, you know, 
Really, you got to do it anyways. They don't care about the lamp. Just why not? Did I miss the first couple minutes of the game? Did either of them check Lumberjack game? No, we did not. We have not oh. had any Lumberjack. So that's still kind of sitting out there. Because, that's interesting. I mean, yeah, it's, it's... It's something to consider that neither of them have checked it. Yeah, I mean, but I think that's one of those things that it's like, I'm not checking this until I have all the items I need. And that's probably the one place in this game that they're saying, I ain't doing without a lamp. I mean, that's fair, I think, at this point in time. When you need a lamp to logically be able to get that item anyway, you know, but if it is, you still want to know. Justin is checking kind of more dense locations at this point in time, but does not find it. Christos does find a tempered sword, which is nice. Uh, you, you know, you don't have silvers, so knowing that you're going to be able to do tempered silverless Ganon is at least nice. The difference between spins and swings is massive. So here's something relatively interesting. Uh, Christos is going through, and again, logically, nothing past this dark room. But also, you have to keep in mind, he has no invincibility items. No cane, no cane of Verna, which is, uh, would be nice. Uh, no mirror shield, so even laser bridge beyond the dark room, it's double locked behind logic. Uh, if the hookshot is here, that means it would have been really pretty buried in terms of logical access. Justin Z picking up the half magic in Super Bunny Cave. Yeah, now Christos is definitely very practiced in laser skip. However, he, he's not going to be silly and try and YOLO this because uh, it'll take two shots for him to die. Finds the key in the vanilla location. Piece of heart, 100 roots. Flawless laser bridge. Yeah, that was what I would call textbook laser bridge, I think. Question in chat, can Hookshot be in Hookshot Cave? Uh, it can be in the very first treasure chest in the bottom right side because that treasure chest is accessible not only through getting the Hookshot, but also through uh, Bonks with the boots. And we do know that Bonks are in developer intended from Nintendo when this game originally came out. So uh, that is absolutely logical. Christos, meanwhile, is on his Trinex fight. It's a crystal, but I don't know if we're going to see. Is there any item here for Christos Owen? Justin Z making a similar play. Yeah. No. Okay. So nothing really in Turtle Rock. It's a nice crystal, but so Christos is about... Uh, Turtle Rock ahead of Justin Z in this, what is turning out to be a very linear seed. Well, so yeah, so he's gonna go ahead and check all the items up here. Um, 
And the only thing that's going to weigh on his mind is, I've done Pod, I've done Desert Palace, you know, I can access a couple chests in Swamp, uh, there's one more item in Ice Palace, um, but Thieves Town might have that hookshot. I mean, yes, we know it doesn't have that hook shot, but that is weighing on Christos's mind. When you gamble like that and said, no, I'm not even going to go. I mean, there's even other one-off locations like Landbolus is completely in logic right now that we have seen Christos skip. He is making strategic decisions to skip uh, pendant areas. The entirety of Thieves Town, the second item in Desert Palace, Palace of Darkness, I don't know is gonna have if it's gonna have an item yet or not on Helmosaur King. But it'll be interesting. We've also not checked to see if Hookshot is going to be there in the back on the Lumberjack ledge. That's still a possibility, which would be delicious in its trolliness. The only place that Hookshot cannot be at this point in time with all the items that we have in logic is that it cannot be in the second half of swamp palace so uh right now i think if you were to ask me and because i'm talking right now i'm going to presume everyone's asking me hey vito where could what's the worst place the hookshot can be the worst place the hookshot can be right now is going to be on the left side of swamp palace i think what do you think, uh, Cobb? Um, I think that that may be the worst place for uh, Christos, but Justin has completed a pendant. Um, and how about Lamp on left side, Swamp Palace, and pendant hookshot. Or, oh, I'm sorry, pedestal hookshot. Hmm. That is so trolly, it is bordering on Plando. I'm telling you, I'm very good at this evil thing. Very good at torturing runners. Do, do you have your membership card in the Evil League of Eagle? Evil? Uh, I'm the founding member. What's your evil laugh sound like? Come on, show me, show me your evil laugh, Cobb. Oh, jeez. I don't know if you can handle that. Putting you on the spot here. <laughs> that was bad, I apologize. That, that needs some work. Okay. It does, it does. So, back to the race. Justin Z, working his way through the dark rooms. That's interesting. I didn't know that uh, the uh, you got a better outline with Invisible Man in a dark room. Only when there's something behind it that's not invisible. So Christos is going to go back. Now keep in mind, he does have access now to a couple treasure chests in Ice Palace. So everything that he's able to check, I think, is, is now in logic. So he does have kind of an interesting... I mean, this this feels like a play that you make. He can, he can beat it, which is nice. It's a crystal dungeon, which is nice. But I don't know. Like, I just, uh, this seed is confusing me. So, we, we have to keep in mind, and unless I'm missing something, while we have done sequence breaks, we have crystals that are outside logic. I don't think that any locations that we can check right now are, you know, 
out of logic in terms of finding the lamp, if that makes sense. No, I'm right there with you. And I think if you're both of these runners, the last thing you want to find is the lamp because that opens things like that lumberjack ledge spot. It opens up things like Aghanim for uh, Palace of Darkness for a possible pedestal check. So if you're these runners, if you see the lamp, you're probably a little bit more angry than you should be. treasure chest so cold stare does indeed hold our final item here in ice palace meanwhile justin z finishes up trinex and is off where are you going justin so i believe that me oh he i think he's gonna is, is he, he gonna, gonna swap he, he might he might also be checking k45 because i don't think we've seen that I don't think we have either, which might be... No, he's going... He's going Pyramid Fairy. Oh, Justin, you slide on. That, 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 that's a nice gamble, because... Um, I mean, it, it's not in logic. Um, but, you know, as we'd said earlier, these runners don't care about the lamp. They're, they're not looking for it don't care about it, but... Yeah. They mainly care no, about where it yeah. is. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, you know, it really depends. And Justin, taking advantage of the ability, you take damage and then you're able to immediately dash. Christos, meanwhile, finds the most important item in the game, the bug net. And at this point... You know, it's just, I mean, Christos has Ice Palace. Oh, no. But it's a, it's a foot race to see who gets to the hook shot first. Oh, okay. He's going to he's gonna be checking Graveyard Ledge here. I thought for a second he was going to, um, he was going to dip into Thieves Town and finish it off. But it looks like Justin's going to do the same thing. Well, I mean, uh, either that or hammer pegs. Oh, hammer pegs would be wonderful. And plus, you have the powder now, too, so you can go ahead and do uh, magic bat. Oh, good point. Just a piece of heart. Okay, is so Justin going to go do it? Christos is not saving and quitting, so it makes me think that he's going to go do hammer pegs now. Do the hammer pegs. Uh, yeah, magic magic pad. Yeah. Yep. Or maybe he's going to Thieves. I, I got to imagine he'll do hammer pegs before he even thinks about Thieves Town. Well, he's already gambled so hard on nothing being in Thieves Town that I've got to say, I've got to assume that he's going to stick to his gamble at this point in time. Yeah, I think he's got to play that out. And it's not like Thieves Town is hard to get to. Um, if it was an out-of-the-way dungeon, then maybe, but he can go in there anytime. Just a big 20. Oh, oh, what are you doing, Christos? You're avoiding Nunty. magic bat. Nunty. And Justin Z isn't going there at all. Oh, Z is... He's going to be checking Lumberjack. He says, no, no. Oh, my God, the book. Oh, wow.
just bombs on Lumberjack Ledge, so that avenue is possibly dead for us. Uh, Christos Elwin looks like he's going to go and check the Bombos tablet right now. And he's here, so why not Swamp? Swamp Palace is the most item-dense location that is still in Logic right now. It's possible. I can't say that either of these runners would be happy about it, but it is possible. <laughs> and Christos is dead rock lock. So it looks like Christos is on his way over here to Spike Cave. Meanwhile, Justin Z realizes, yeah, there's one item left in Thieves Town that I haven't checked. It is the hammer pegs, so he's gambling hard here. <laughs> Who would think that of the two runners, Justin would be the first to go back into Thieves? Not me. Hey, there's a hook shot! Oh! Christos Owen is in goish mode. Watch this be lame. Maybe no. Ah, uh, yeah, no. I wouldn't say goish mode. I would say go mode, because he's not even thinking about that lamp. Won't even consider it. Um, he doesn't even have another dark room to do. I mean. And that's that's true. He's like, nah, I'm done. Go mode it is. Uh, he's got Swamp Palace. That's the only crystal he has left. He's done all other seven crystal dungeons, avoiding Thieves Town entirely, avoiding clearing out Desert Palace, avoiding clearing out Pod. Uh, that's great. Justin Z just picks up his book. Uh, Gotta wonder which way he's gonna go from here. Where's the lamp? Where, where could it even be? Lamp could absolutely be somewhere here in Swamp. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I, I gotta imagine at this point, lamp. Yeah, Lamb's pretty much gotta be in Swamp. There's not many options left. And ladies and gentlemen, this is one of those seeds that teaches all of the would-be runners of Legend of Zelda Link from Past Randomizer how important it is to learn your dark rooms. Because let's face it, uh, Cobb, I don't know how good you are at running this game. I am what one might call a plebe and I don't learn dark rooms, and this is why I need to learn dark rooms, because this would be horrible if I got this seed in any sort of matchup. Yeah, lamp, or, uh, dark rooms are definitely important. Um, you can... Hey, if you're running against a runner that doesn't know dark rooms, the very fact that even if you don't find anything in that dungeon, you don't have to dip back in there, you know, like if, say, Pod, it was a crystal. You finish it without the lamp, which is difficult, but if you do it, then you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, going back there. You're not double dipping just because of the lamp. Huge time save. And there's the lamp. Yep. With the frustration uh, swipe. It's like, yeah. Thanks. So yeah, now we have official go mode. And this seed, uh, again... Chris, uh, both these runners have done an amazing job. This seed has really pulled them in various directions. So, so uh, I'm going to backtrack this as far as I can. Um, 
you needed to dip Ice Palace to get boots, not able to finish it, to uh, get... Um, where was the mirror? Oh, uh, for Meyer, for Mirror and Meyer. Um, and then that gave you book in K45 to hookshot. <laughs> yeah, and the mirror was not locked behind a dark room. It was one of the first items that we got. Um, the item on Vitreous was, was something else, but we did need the boots to get the fire rod, which unlocked, uh, you know, what's in Bonkrock. So yeah, this was, I think all told, when you start putting the spears together, this was a pretty linear seed. You had to do one thing and then the next and then the next and then the next and it was not it didn't give you much option to to create some routing there looks like uh it's time for a game here chat has already taken uh note of that if you want to uh explain that oh absolutely i'll be happy to do it now there are 22 treasure chests in ganon's tower that can possibly contain the Ganon's Tower big key. So we're going to be looking through the first 22 treasure chests to get those. 1 through 22. Go ahead and get your guesses in chat. We are not on one of the speed gaming channels, guys. So this will not impact the leaderboard in any capacity. So I'm, I'm sorry if you guys were waiting for the signal to go. Uh, but I appreciate everyone being good sports about it anyway. Uh, 1 through 22. Go ahead get your guesses in chat. Uh, Cobb. My good friend, what's going to be your guess? So, um, I have to eternally now pick chest number 11 because in, uh, I think it was my first game of the round of 64, I accidentally skipped chest number 11. Yeah, that does require you to eternally <laughs> pick 11. Yeah, which... Luckily, it didn't have the big key. How, how about you? Well, I try to pick the same thing over and over until I, I get one right. And right now, I'm on number 18. And I've not gotten it right yet with number 18. Uh, Christos is in Ganon's Tower right now, so we'll see. Number one's a Butter Sword. Number two is just Bob, so no way to go ahead and clear out the right side of Ganon's Tower without a small key. He's going to go ahead and progress over to the left side for now. And it's an, uh, an arrow capacity upgrade on the torch, so Bob lives, ladies and gents. Oh, Justin. Uh, Justin's playing this, uh, I don't care about the lamp pretty hard. He's going to go finish Helmet Soar. Um, I mean, that hook shot on, on the Ether tablet, that, I mean, he, Christos could do that, and then he could do the Spike Cave, and that was it. I do not blame Justin for avoiding going into that particular location. Unfortunately, that's the play he needs to make. Christos coming up on treasure chest number nine. And at this point, Christos is in NMG, go as fast as you possibly can mode. And, you know, I gotta say, Christos is pretty darn good at this game in general, wouldn't you say? I would say, uh, pretty sure his uh, NMG time Somewhere in the 125th or 126th minute. Or not, hour 25th or hour 26. Yeah, he's, he's pretty decent, yeah. And by pretty decent, I mean 
Awesome. So this is uh, it's a really healthy seed, all things said. 17 hearts, blue mail. Uh, I got to think that the total treasures open count is going to be ridiculously high, particularly since we're on the way back to Bob's Torch here. This is chest number 14 here at Bob. Now, one thing to note, we still haven't found silvers. I have no idea where... Christos doing quick kill strats on Ice Armos. What is this? And there it is. That was chest number 15. I'm going to go with that because I didn't count at all. <laughs> Oh, I stopped counting. I think I've memorized like each chest location with standard routing at this point. I only have to count when people do something crazy like Dark Magician strats or something. All right, so Christos is on his way. Justin is still hunting for that hook shot. I think he's going to be dipping into Swamp Palace, unfortunately. Or not. He's going, oh wait, I forgot. Oh, he's making the play. Christos, going to the safety room, says, you know, I need... I need something. You gotta know, Christos thinks he's doing pretty good. Uh, he doesn't know he's doing pretty good, but he's gotta be feeling pretty good because that hookshot location was super trolly and it was locked behind a lot. If you think the book was behind, the mirror was behind, my God, so much horribleness. Like he knows he's doing pretty well with that particular gamble. Yeah, but at this level, um, you always got a question because, you know, all these runners are so great that, you know, he could be saying, oh, well, uh, Justin didn't go to Turtle Rock until he was in go mode, which actually doesn't save you much time. But uh, Yeah, I mean, he really... There weren't many better decisions he could have made. He skipped the things that he should have skipped and um, went to cave 45 pretty quickly and then almost immediately checked the tablet. And here's Justin. He did not find what he was looking for at the Bombo, so he is going back to Swamp Palace and going to be immensely disappointed. I mean, we, we didn't open a single chest here at Swamp Palace by the time Christos got here, so. Uh, he, no, he, he, uh, went to Ether Tablet. He, he got, uh, what he was looking oh, for. Oh, did he? Oh, right. Okay. He's in go -ish Justin's mode. in go Yeah, he's in go-ish mode. He's not going to be in go mode fully, but I don't know if he's actually going to check anything. Christos falls for the third time in the lamp room. Um, he's got that, to that restart qualifies. it. Yeah, that qualifies as a numpty, please. I agree with you. Oh, he needs to be careful. He's going to wait. Yeah, he, he was going to wait for the noise to make sure he didn't uh, despawn the dungeon. Because um, he would think that that would be game over for him. But truth be told, he it really wouldn't. He would still be in good position to win. And he's looking for those silvers, I guess. Yeah, I mean, given how many treasure chests he's opened at this point in time, he's just hoping for silvers because that does speed the fight up. Although, 
butter sword, you can't ask for much better. I mean, he also doesn't have the cape. Not that you really need the cape. Yeah, you have the butter sword. Yeah, the, the only point of the cape is to be able to, you know, one cycle uh, phase one and phase two, which should be pretty easy with the butter sword. Yeah, so, so Cobb, do you want to explain the despawning the dungeon? Because I see some questions in chat goes, what? That's a thing? So what you can, what can happen is if you um, ascend the stairs in the uh, room that has the four eyes and the magic refill and the heart, um, at the ex on the exact same frame that the torches run out in the previous room, it will despawn all of the sprites in Agus Tower and you pretty much have to restart Agatha Tower because, like, uh, for example, uh, Moldorm won't spawn, so you can't get across the gap. Now we've we've seen it happen, but you know that's we're talking about one frame which uh, i believe is like one sixtieth of what is that one sixtieth of a second is it 60 fps Yeah, Jeff brings up a good point. The bigger issue is that Agate 2 definitely won't spawn. Oh, he's got to be careful. He gets hit by one of these bats, and he's safe now. Because the rest of these bats are not going to do uh, four hearts of damage to him. No, I think Christos is good from this point on. got the torch glitch and he is on his way to the spins that are just about done. Justin is... What's Justin doing? Justin? Oh, he's got to do Ice Palace still. He can, he can do it in go mode, so, I mean, that does save a little bit of time, but... Uh, not enough. And GG, Christos Owen, he completes the wonderful first round. Looks like he's going to cross that bridge threshold with an official SRL time of 1 hour, 48 minutes, and 50 seconds, which is... An amazing time. Dot done. Dot comment. Lol. Yeah, that's a uh, pretty good time, especially considering they dipped every single dungeon. Um, didn't complete everyone, but they dipped everyone. And with that, we do see Justin Z uh, go ahead and forfeiting. Uh, so we're going to see if we can't get them both in here at the same time to talk about uh, how horrible this seed was. You know, the early double dips that were required, the linearity of the seed. Hey, 
And we have both Christos Owen and Justin Z. Let's go ahead and pull them both in here now. <laughs> that was quite the adventure. Oh, oh hi. And hey. uh, we are pulled and joined by both Christos Owen and Justin Z. GG to both of you guys. That was a thing. Yeah, who rolled this seed? I want to know. Just the name Vitor, like usual. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was that was yeah that was a real adventure. I really... had no idea how well I was doing comparatively. It was impossible to really get to know. Yeah, I just I just assumed I was behind for just a, a bunch of small reasons, basically, and yeah, I turned out to be behind by about how much I expected to be. So. There are definitely a few things I was really worried about. I dived the first half of Thieves Town and then left, which was worrying me. And then I also did just half of Desert and then left without finding out what Lamolas had. And that was also worrying me. But luckily, neither of those were required. And I just want to say that's five out of five matches in a row I've had Thieves Town be a pendant. It's really annoying. Wow. You, you should probably say something to the devs about that. Yeah, the game's broken for sure. Yeah, Christos, do you know any devs that you can, you know, maybe <laughs> message directly, say, hey guys, this needs fixed? Yeah, I'm going to write them a stern letter. But no, seriously, good game, Justin. Oh, um, thank you. I'm you really intrigued to, to rewatch that. I'm guessing what? it was pretty similar because it was you'll have linear. to tell me You'll have to tell me all about it because there's no way I'm going to rewatch that. <laughs> <laughs> well, what really kind of you know, struck me was how linear this seed was. You know, you, you both made effectively the same plays at the exact same time, Justin, you were just kind of a little bit behind. And it, it seemed to me that when it's a linear seed, it's going to favor, uh, you know, someone who has maybe a little bit stronger execution on Christo society. Uh, Justin, I mean, you found the, Justin did find the flute early, but there really wasn't anything you could do to no. take advantage of that. It really, I thought, okay, I might have gained a little time from that, but that was it. So when it played out that way, I thought, well, okay. So that small advantage just kind of evaporated. That's um, actually really lucky for me because I accidentally completely overlooked Shovel Spot for a while mm. until I found Mushroom and I was like, I'll fetch Quest. And I was like, oh, wait, I have the Shovel now. <laughs> I, should, I should do that. Yeah. Um... Definitely, this is a seed that was a great example of how valuable um, dark room strats can be, because mm -hmm. this seed uh, des was designed that you had to double dip almost every dungeon. Ice Palace gave you the boots, but you couldn't complete it. Uh, Misery Mire gave you the mirror, but you couldn't complete it um, because you. Because what the lamp was in uh, was Swamp Palace. Swamp. Yeah, as I finally discovered. Yeah, um, just so many double dips required that luckily you didn't have to do. Yeah, the Maya one by Logic was pretty horrible. I was really expecting to find lamp in Maya, given that we only had fire rod, and then finding mirror and ice rod. I was like, okay, wow. <laughs> Yeah. Like, like everything I was expecting didn't happen. I was not expecting to find boots in ice to start with, especially not in that chest there. Like I was expecting it to be one of the first couple chests and I was expecting it to be like hammer or something that led directly to hammer. Right. That's exactly what I was expecting too. Yeah, ice definitely the uh, keys in there were perfectly arranged to allow you to get that deep into the dungeon and still be in logic without you know hook shot or hammer yeah that was a real good stress test of the ice palace logic so i'm pretty pleased that that was possible <laughs> and didn't break anything yeah although i still logic around it because i because i sequence broke and went around so i was basically trapped in the right side with no keys because i bomb jumped to get there i realized when i did that that could have been a mistake but then the boots were there so i thought well okay as long as hook shot isn't in the other part of ice palace I have Wait, a complete... so did you, because I did the same, I bomb jumped. You did? Okay. Yeah, but I still had a key. Okay. Christos, you, you did not bomb jump on your first time through there. Oh, you, okay, you I didn't did, do the... Okay, you did I the see. hook shot bomb jump, he did the, like, vanilla uh, ice palace bomb jump. Yeah, gotcha. I did, 
did both. So yeah, I <laughs> I was kind of relieved actually because I realized after I did it, I'm like, wait a minute, I don't have a key right now. So yeah, I was just basically hoping that meant Hookshot was somewhere else, and it was, but. Okay, I'm with you. So, yeah. which key did you miss? Did you not pick a I the one know. in like the the massive pie room? Yeah, I didn't. I never even went there or to Ice T. So. Oh, because you did the first bomb jump. Right, yeah. right, right. I see. I see. Yeah. I gotta say, when you were going through Ice Palace, Christmas, I saw you like make an uncharacteristic like stop for like half a second and think about what you were going to do and i'm like it is christos not moving like it really threw me for a slip there yeah i it was a real struggle i had to really think hard quite a few times in this and I, like i made some pretty silly decisions which luckily didn't burn me too much like forgetting about shovel being one and then i just accidentally walked past magic bat when i could have done that later on um there's like two things I realized. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> you, you both skip Magic Bat. Do you realize mm -hmm. how much I was hoping for Hookshot to be on Magic Bat just because neither of you checked it? I was really expecting to have to dive Swamp without Hook. I was I was about to go there after K45, but then found Book and I was like, okay, I'll go do Bombo's tablet. And I was like, should I do Ether tablet or should I just go in the Swamp? And obviously very relieved that I did the third tablet first. That's funny too because I actually went in the portal and started going to Swamp and then I changed my mind and went and checked the Ether tablet. <laughs> it's quite funny. Like <laughs> one I thing thought... no, go on. Well, you know, it's like, okay, I could just from the feeling that I was behind, I'm like, well if it's in Swamp, I'm it's over. So I I'd better just hope Christos didn't check Ether tablet because of the inconvenience of the book location and timing. And that it's there and it was so yeah like i don't know i wasted a bunch of time like given where book was and that led directly to hook if yeah after finding mirror in uh maya you just started doing the overworld mirror checks yeah that like that could have led you to the hook shot so quick would have been it, massive yeah yeah and it took me an age to find it i cleared all of turtle rock and all of that and blah yeah. blah blah all of that good stuff that had absolutely nothing really which would have been really interesting because that would have been a complete east mountain like east yeah west mountain skip like nothing was there that's true actually i wonder if that's where the silver arrows where it was hookshot cave i think yeah that's what i think it's a dark yeah. world so i was yeah. like oh, it's probably there yeah. i don't can't think of anywhere else in the dark world i didn't check yeah me either <laughs> pretty much covered it all but yeah, I'm really hoping for a nicer, <laughs> a nicer yeah, game too. That would be good. Yeah, speaking of game two, it's going to be tomorrow, kind of at the same same time. We don't quite know what channel yet, but 3.30 Eastern time tomorrow, uh, Justin Z versus Christos Owen, going to be the, the second match. Uh, I mean, it's got to be something nicer than this, right, guys? Oh, right? Don't, even, don't even say that, because... The commentary curse we're not the broadcast not over it's still active so now i don't know we may be in big trouble now um i'm gonna be at work at that time could you guys uh reschedule that match i'd appreciate it no <laughs> <laughs> oh, either way justin z and christos owen game one going to christos owen uh justin z uh hoping to come back tomorrow with 3.30 Eastern time. Stay tuned. We're going to figure out exactly what channel it's going to be on a little bit later. But uh, any closing thoughts from, from either of you guys? I'd just like to thank you guys, uh, Vitasia, Cobb, um, Dark Replica for tracking, and uh, Tiru for restreaming. I appreciate you guys doing that for us, and uh, I, hope, I hope you enjoyed it. Exactly what Justin just said. <laughs> uh, well, we enjoyed it. We enjoy because, let's face it, we're fans of chat. And when chat wins, we win. And we enjoyed watching you suffer. So there's that. We definitely did suffer. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it, I guess. That, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, keep in mind, there's still more randomizer action going on later this evening. We have a double header 
Jacobs for Life versus Fareem over here on Speed Gaming, the original. Uh, that's a back-to-back -back match at 6 p.m. Eastern, so starting here in about 20 minutes. Uh, that's going to be hype. I'm going to be tuning in for that one myself. Uh, if you haven't followed the runners, you know, what are you guys doing with your lives? Go ahead, follow Chris S. Owen and Justin Z here on Twitch. Big shout out to Dark Replica stepping in with the tracking and uh, Cobb La 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 for stepping in with the last minute co commentary. Thank you guys so much for, for all the work that you guys do. Uh, I really sincerely appreciate it. Oh, it was a pleasure commentating with you, uh, Vitasia, and thank you to the runners for putting on such a great show. Thanks, yeah, thanks Bob. again, guys. See you guys tomorrow. All right, and that's going to do it for us. Uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Remember, over on Speed Gaming, Jacobs for life versus for rank. Jacobs beat me the very <laughs> first, and we're offline. <laughs> thanks, guys. <laughs> Take it easy. Oh, man. Okay. We just called it good. I'm good. You're one sign off. <laughs> I'm allowed one sign off, not eight. <laughs> <laughs> like, I always feel like I'm wrapping it up and then it just keeps on going. It's like, oh, I need to say this. Oh, I need to say that. Oh, well, we're good. <laughs>